welcome to Jeremiah Smith Ministries, a place where you can grow in God's Word. Well, are you ready? Amen. Grab your tablet, grab your Bible. Let's get into it. Let's go to Acts 24.1. Acts 24.1. Isn't that a wild place to start out a Mother's Day message? <laughs> the book of Acts. Amen. We got some mothers that are Acts, people of Acts today, praise the Lord. That's where they, those are the people who got stuff done, praise the Lord, by the Holy Spirit. That's where the Acts of the church were happening, praise the Lord. And I believe we've got some mothers this year that are happening. Amen. Mothers this year that aren't just sitting on to the side and mothers that aren't just sitting there crawling off and watching, you know, 50,000 hours of Netflix today. They're, these are mothers that want to get in life and people that want to get involved in life with God and, and do some wonderful things this year. Amen. Some mothers that want to accomplish some dreams and some goals this year. Praise the Lord. And I believe that's who I'm talking to today. I'm talking to people that want to accomplish their dreams and their goals this year, praise the Lord. Acts 24, 1. Listen to what this says here in Acts 24, 1. It says, And after five days, Ananias, the high priest, ascended with the elders and with a certain uh, orator named Tertullius, who informed the governor against Paul. Wow, think about that. He Paul's affecting the leaders in this area. <laughs> They're, they're informed about Paul. Hey, man, are you a mother that's affecting your area? Then you're being informed, man. They're like, oh, man, she's here, you know. I believe that's what we have today. We have mothers that are affecting the areas that they're living in today. Mothers that are affecting the world, praise the Lord. The second chapter says, And when he was called forth, Tertullius uh, began to accuse him, saying, seeing, seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence. We accept it always, and in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. Notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of thy clemency a few words. For we have found this man, talking about Paul, said that they, we have found this man a pestilent fellow. <laughs> They called him a pestilent fellow. Amen. And my message today is, called, is going to be called Pestilent Mothers. Praise the Lord. Amen. I believe we have some pestilent mothers out there. People that are affecting, mothers that are affecting change in their family. Mothers that are affecting change in the world. Praise the Lord. And that's a pestilent mother. People that are affecting change. Praise the Lord. Mothers that are affecting change. And a mower, a, a, more, a mover of of seditious uh, among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarene. So he, he, was, a, he was a ringleader and a, a effector of the world, praise the Lord. And I believe mothers are ringleaders and effectors of their families and of the world, praise the Lord. You know, you affect the world when you affect your family. You have no idea what your kid could turn out to be, praise the Lord. And they could be someone that affects the whole earth. And it's so important as a mother, you're stealing the right things into those kids, praise the Lord. And, you know, and I give honor to those women that have already been doing that, praise the Lord. But we're supposed to be mothers that affect and change our families, praise the Lord. I'm going to talk to you a lot about that today. But uh, we're talking about pestilent mothers, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You say, well, that's wild. What, what's a pestilent person? Well, you know, if you look up pestilent in the Greek, it actually means disease. Wow, think about that, you know. They were saying Paul was a disease because he was affecting people all around him, praise the Lord, you know. And mothers, they can be like a good disease. They're affecting all their family around them, praise the Lord, amen. And their family, they're causing it for generations because your kids can, are going to have kids and they're going to have their kids and they're going to have their kids. And you think about that, you're causing and affecting them with something every day praise the lord what are you infecting them with think about that for a minute what are you infecting your kids with you know you're saying something to them by your actions and what you're doing today what are, what are you saying to your kids what how are you being a pestilent to your kids you know i, I know we're kind of that way with my kid you know we are pestilent to them sometimes we'll make sure he's got his hair combed make sure he has his clothes all together want him to look sharp you know Praise the Lord, we're pestilence to him, you know. We want to make sure that he's all taken care of, you know. He's like, get away, get away. Did you call him your hair? 
Did you brush your teeth? You know, we're pestilence to him, you know. And, you know, but we're affecting his world, praise the Lord. And you're affecting the world around you. And you may not even realize it, but you're affecting the world around you by what you're doing every day. Amen. And mothers don't realize how much of an effect they're having on their families and the people around them. They don't have any idea. I don't believe that. I really don't. In some, you know, they may even think it, but you don't think about it in the capacity. I believe God thinks about it. Amen. Because you could affect generations and you don't even realize it. Think about that. You can affect generations of people and you don't even realize it by what you're doing and by what you're saying. Praise the Lord. Paul was like a disease in a good way. <laughs> Amen. And a good mother is like a disease in a good way. Amen. Mother's purpose is to spread Jesus into the family like a disease. Amen. All the love of God, all the peace of God, everything about Jesus into the family like a disease. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now I have a mother who, and you know, she's had many challenges throughout her life for sure. You know, I mean, she went through it all. You wouldn't believe the things that she's went through. My mother actually went through a situation where my father actually passed away actually died and then she had to recover emotionally and all that from that situation he had health issues throughout he's had health issues throughout his life and she's had to deal with that quite often you know praise the lord yet she still uh, tried to affect her kids in a special way still is today i'm going to talk a little bit about that praise the lord my wife she's had all kinds of things affect her in her life she's had a father who passed away when she was young and you think about that you know how she's had to cope with that and as she brought come, came into her family, how she still had to be a mother that was strong for her kids and be a blessing to her kids, you know. Mothers go through things is what I'm trying to tell you. Mothers have been through all kinds of challenges. And don't think that I don't realize that mothers go through challenges, you know. We've all been through challenges. We can line up around the world, you know, with all the people that have had all kinds of challenges in their lives. But that doesn't mean you can't be a good impact on your family. My my mother's been a good impact on my family, and so has my, my wife. She's been a wonderful impact on our family. I mean, you think about that, with the challenges they have, a lot of people could have said, well, they're never going to do, they're never going to have a great impact, and they're never going to be successful in what they do, you know, but yet they've been a great impact on my kids, on my kids, and on me. Think about that, you know. Man, you think about the emotional and the, and the, uh, the stress that they had to deal with with these situations, you know, and the challenges they had to overcome, you know, with, with not having a father in a situation and, and not having a, and having one father pass away, you think about, man, you know, they had to overcome some serious emotions and, and things in their lives, but yet God was there for them. God gave them the grace. Amen. And whatever it is that you're facing today that's got you down and whatever challenges you've been going through that you say, well, man, I, I don't know that I can get back up. Well, think about them. They've gotten back up and think about how they've still become good good mothers and, and, and affected other people's lives, praise the Lord. Amen. You can get back up. It doesn't matter what the challenge is. You say, well, you don't realize what I'm going through. Well, I do. I do realize what you're going through. I've talked to many people and I know they go through lots of struggles, but I'm saying that God will help you and give you grace to be the best mother you can possibly be. Amen. And you want to leave a good impact on the world. Amen. A good impact on your family, praise the Lord, because you want them to accomplish their dreams and their goals. And it'll fulfill you like you don't even know if you'll do that. Amen. You'll see it later even more and you'll be fulfilled. Just like a person sowing, you know, seed into the ground. You know, they don't even see nothing coming up. They don't see nothing happening at first, you know, and it is work, you know. It is a lot of work to till the ground and put the seeds in there. But you're going to produce wonderful things, praise the Lord. Wonderful things in their lives and wonderful things in your life. In the sense of accomplishment and wonderfulness in your life you're going to have as you become a pestilent mother, praise the Lord. Amen. Are you a pestilent mother today? Amen. Pestilent mothers are people of passion, people with dreams, people that never give up on life. That's what a pestilent mother is. It's a person that feels like when they get up in the morning, they have something to accomplish, praise the Lord. Amen. Mothers are like that. 
my father who my mother loved uh, you know she he passed away like i said and my my wife's father he passed away you know but they overcame with the lord's help and you can overcome your challenges praise the lord with the lord's help amen so if you have many challenges and you can still be you can still be a great mother right now amen starting today maybe you haven't been a good mother and you're really sad about that today, will you start today, amen? Start today being a mother that affects people's lives for the Lord, amen? Amen. I don't know, there's nothing more fulfilling than doing what God has you to do, amen? There's nothing you're going to be more rewarded for than doing what God has you to do, amen? There's nothing more when you go to bed at night that makes you feel good is doing what God has you to do, amen? Yeah, it is work. Amen. But it is fulfilling, praise the Lord, what God has us to do. Amen. There's mothers today, you know, that run from, you know, situations, you know, don't run from it. Be a person that causes wonderfulness to happen, praise the Lord. Amen. Romans 8, 28 says it like this, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. Whatever that situation is in your home. And let me tell you now, I've come from a broken home. And I know that God can work all things to the good, praise the Lord, in the home. Amen. Romans 8, 28 in the Amplified says it like this. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God. To those who are called according to his plan and his purpose. Amen. So if you've had challenges in your home or maybe you're dealing with challenges right now, God can work it all to the good if you let him. Amen. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together for good. For we are his lovers and who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose. That's Romans 8, 28 in the Passion Translation. Amen. Amen. And they're continually woven together. And he's weaving together your life and making it more wonderful the more you serve God. He wants to weave and work out all the situations as long as you're serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. And he can work out all the situations you don't think you can work out if you'll let him. Amen. He can work out everything. He'll bring somebody into the picture to help you if he needs to. He'll, he's got many ways to fix things and fix things in your family. Amen. He'll put you in a different situation and work the things that need to be worked if you listen to the Holy Spirit today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So my mom was in a, she's a, she is a pest woman praise the lord a, a christian woman and and she was a plague in our house praise the lord for christian disease <laughs> Amen. she was she was she caused all kinds of people to be infected in our family praise the lord because of different things and we're going to talk about that how you can cause those type of things to happen in your life now the, the, the situation was against her you know you think about this now she had a husband that wasn't saved <laughs> and she had a son i was very rebellious you know and uh, she caused the whole situation to be turned around. I'm going to talk to you about a few things she did, praise the Lord, and a little bit about my my wife and as being a mother, praise the Lord. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about that today, praise the Lord. And again, it has let's talk about the first thing here. You know, we're going to talk about her prayer life and how it changed the home. You know, when I was younger, uh, my mother she had a biggest one of the biggest impacts she had on my family. You know, is that she would spend so much time in prayer. It was amazing, you know, I'd hear my mom praying in the shower, you know, and I, I mean, you'd hear her praying in tongues so loud, we were like, what on earth is going on in there? <laughs> but she, you could hear her just talking in tongues, you know, and just praying. That was her place of worship, and it was really her only place to get alone, I guess, that she talked about that she would spend time in the Lord and just praising God in the shower, but she'd pray in tongues. And you think about that, now she was praying out things in her family all the time when she's doing that. She's praying out things in situations where being worked out because she was praying in the shower and, and it had an impact just by hearing it in our home. It had an impact in our home in a big way. We were like, that's a woman of prayer. That's a woman that cares about her situation and she wants to see some great change in her family. She's a pestilent woman, you know. I mean, I could hear tongues, you know, in my bedroom, you know. <laughs> you know, I may be rocking out. 
uh, doing living for the world, you know, and stuff. But I could hear tongues down the hallway in the bedroom, you know. My dad was living his life, you know, and he may be watching sports, you know, but he, we had tongues coming out of the, end of the shower in the bedroom, praise the Lord. Why? Because prayer changes things in your home. Amen. She became a woman of prayer. And a woman of prayer changes things. You know, my grandmother was a woman of prayer. She, she lived a life of prayer. And you knew grandma was praying for you. I had some situations in high school I'll never forget. I remember a guy one time they shut off the locker room on both sides. And they beat him up real bad in the locker room. And I was the only other person in the locker room and they didn't touch me. I, I believe it was because my grandma was praying, you know, and she cared about me. I spent much time with my grandma being raised, you know, but I believe that she spent time praying for me, praise the Lord. And my grandfather was a person of prayer too, but people of prayer, you know, and they handed that off when they passed away, you know, to my mother and she's a woman of prayer, you know, and you know, what's going to happen to my family is that they're going to hand it off and we're going to be, you know, Know, which we are people of prayer, but you know, it's going to be handed off that baton of prayer. Are you carrying that baton of prayer in your family today? Are you carrying that, you know, be a person that prays for your family and the Holy Spirit and, and prays for the needs of your family like you need to pray for them, praise the Lord. Carry that baton for your family, praise the Lord. And you'll be surprised the amount of change, unbelievable things would change because of that time of prayer my mom did. And how even hearing it, like I said, you know, my, my friends would come over, they could hear my mom praying. <laughs> you know, you think about that, you know, but the, how that even affected friends and people around us by her prayer life. Wow, think about that today, you know, and how so many things didn't happen to me and so many things didn't happen to my father and my brother because mom was a person of prayer. My grandmother was a person of prayer, amen? Pestilent women, amen? Cause an infection into the family. Good Christian values being taught into the family, praise the Lord. Her passion, you know, is interesting because it, she would change the environment, you know, that we lived in. You know, she, she wanted to make a change on that environment. And, you know, I'll never forget, you know, we, lived, we were going to church at first. She had us going to church. And uh, I'll never forget, as we went to church, you know, I, I was like, this is church. You know, there was a lady on the back row. She would sit there and she would do her nails at one of my first churches I went to. I was like, this this has to be a boring service. There's there's a lady on the back row who's, who's filing her nails, <laughs> you know. But my mom didn't like that, so she didn't settle for that, you know. Uh, she she would try to get me to even do things in that church. I never I, I got into Royal Rangers. I'll never forget. And that was one of the weirdest experiences I ever had. You know, no, not to put down Royal Rangers or anything, because I really think that's a great thing. But uh, this Royal Rangers was a little different. I'll never forget. You know, I joined, and then they had all the men line up all the way around in a circle. You know, and you had to run between their legs, and they would hit you on the bottom as you went through. You know, that was the route that was to join you into Royal Rangers. You know, you got smacked on the hind end by fifty different people. I was like, this is a really different. Group of people, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord, you know, but it was just the camaraderie of the men. But uh, I was like, this is really different, you know. And then I'd bring my friend, and he was like, what on earth are we at today, you know? And, uh, you know, we it was a really interesting experience at that church. Well, my mom didn't settle for that, though. My mom wanted to find a church where there, there was the presence of God. She'd been raised. You know, in a church in the old time where they, they they prayed and they had great moves of God. And she, she wanted me to be in that environment where there was the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I'll never forget, you know, she traveled around. We went to church after church with my grandfather because he used to take me on Sundays. And, and my mom, they would search for a church. And finally they found this church. And I mean, it was not just a church. It was a powerful church. The Holy Spirit was moving in a strong way. Matter of fact, I mean, you'd come in there, you know, and they'd be standing and they'd be watching what was going on because it was so exciting uh, because the God was moving so powerfully and you could feel the presence of God in that place. But she didn't settle for the best or the, the for the least, the, you know, she didn't settle for what wasn't, what wasn't the best. She settled for the best, amen. She wanted to get me in the presence of God, amen. And it's important that we, we don't settle for the least or what 
what's not the best? You know, we settle for the best. Amen. And she made sure that I was in somewhere where I was feeling the power of God. Amen. You know, and a pep sermon's good for a while, you know, or an encouraging sermon's good for a while, but it does it's no substitute for the presence of God in your life. Amen. And you know, these kids, they need that presence of God in their life so bad. You know, if you get that if you touch the presence of God, you never forget it. Amen. It leaves a mark on you you'll never forget. You know, and I'm still remembering to this day that the presence of God in that place because it doesn't leave a mark that you forget. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. The tangible presence of God in a service. Amen. Where you feel it. Amen. So it's it's manifest and you can feel it. Praise the Lord. Not just going to church, but it, you shouldn't be able to be just a person that does your nails on the back. You should feel the presence of God in a service. Amen. The wonderful working, burden removing, yoke destroying power. Amen. I believe it's flowing here today. I believe he's touching people today and mothers today. Praise the Lord. And you know, and that's what he wants to do. He wants, he, my, my mom didn't settle for less. She wanted to make sure I had tasted that. Praise the Lord. And it did changed my life forever because she took the time to get me there and make sure that I was in that presence. Amen. Matter of fact, got the call of God there, you know, and you think about that, you know, if she hadn't have taken me, if she hadn't been infectionist, amen, if she hadn't been a pestilent woman, amen, I'm sure I wanted to do other things. I wanted to play music at the time, and I wanted to do it different things and play music, you know, And but my mom made sure I was there every Sunday and Wednesday, made sure I was tasting the presence of God. I remember it, in fact, I'd bring friends, and it just affected them in a tremendous way. I mean, you think about that, you know, it didn't just affect me, it affected other people, and your life is affecting more people than you possibly can imagine you know because your kids are telling their friends and you know and you're affecting your fa- your your husband and you're affecting people all around you being a mother praise the lord amen amen it's important that you realize that so she didn't just affect you know or she affect she didn't just affect what was going on she affected the environment and she made sure i was in the right environment that was conducive to my achieving what god wanted to do in my life amen she cared about that You know, you need to care about that with your kids, the environment that they're in. The environment needs to have some kind of presence of God in it. Amen. If it's just you, sometimes you can't get them to a place like that, you know. But maybe you can create that in your own home. Praise the Lord. Amen. My parents actually, at one point, they even created a prayer place. You know, they had people come pray in, in our home. You know, wow. Think about that, you know. And then they also taught in our in, in our house. You know, they would have Bible studies and they'd have prayer services just in our house. And you can do that in your own house and affect your kids in a magnificent way. Praise the Lord. If you're willing to do it. Amen. Amen. So she affected the whole house with God. Another thing that was really interesting about my mother is that she affected my father. I'll never forget he was unsaved and my mom got, you know, she was baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking tongues, a fired up woman for God, you know, and she infected my dad. You know, you think about all those times she's praying and all those times that she was spending time with the Lord, well, it causes him to change in his life. Uh, one night he's up in his room and they were in separate rooms actually at the time. And uh, he was in his room, had his TV. And uh, I'll never forget, he was watching a minister on TV and gave his heart to the Lord, you know. And I believe it has so much to do with my mother infecting the environment. Amen. Amen. Being a pestilent in the environment. Amen. Causing Christian disease to come into their lives. Amen. Infecting them with Jesus. Amen. Like Paul we're talking about, you know. Being a pestilent person. Amen. Be a pestilent person. Cause things to happen in your family in a good way. Amen. For God. Amen. Amen. Be a person that affects change. Don't just settle for less than the best. Have the best in mind for your family. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to talk about three keys of being a pestilent woman in your home today. And I I was praying and I felt like these are the things I wanted to share today. Uh, Amen. A pestilent woman makes sure her values as a mother becomes her kids' values. Wow. That's true, and that's what my mother did. I just told you, you know, she made sure that her values affected my values. Amen. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 says it like this. It says, Be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. I love that about Paul, you know. He said, you can, by my life, 
you can watch me and you become more like Christ. Amen. Isn't that what mother's goals should be? Is to be people that as you look at their life, it makes you want to go more after Christ. I can look at you and become more like Christ because you're falling after him with all your might. Think about that. You know, that's the kind of values that you want to instill in your kids. Amen. Where they look at you and they see those same values that you have striving to fall after Christ. Paul said, all that I may obtain the prize, you know, talking about reaching for his goals of falling after God. Nothing else meant anything to him but falling after God. Amen. And that's what we need to have today is the passion of falling after God with passion and causing those values to be impacted to our kids, praise the Lord. My mother, really, but with her life, strove to fall after God like her mother. You know, she, my mom, my grandmother, you could actually go to her house, and my grandfather too, they would have their Bibles and just sit there reading their Bibles all the time. You know, they like to read all the way through the Bible, and they, you could, you knew, you know, when you came over there, my grandfather would literally fall asleep, and you would see him in his chair, and he'd have his Bible open as he fell asleep there in his, in his, on his couch, you know. And my grandmother, the same way, she'd just read the Bible, just you'd see her in there studying the Word with the light on, you know, in her living room, you know, and that caused those values to be passed down to my mother. And, you know, she, she had lots of challenges and lots of things she faced, like I talked about, but those values came through, amen, because they they were sown into her life. Amen. And you don't know, you know, when you pass those values down to your kids, when it's going to mainly really affect them, you know, it may be later in life. You may not see it right now, but it will affect them. They'll remember what mama did and what daddy did. I remember when I was calling out and needing help from the Lord and, I mean, you know, we're about 20 years old, re needed to rededicate my life. But I remembered who I needed to call because mom had instilled that values, those values in me. Amen. And you need to make sure you're instilling those values into your kids. Amen. Being pestilent mothers. Amen. And stealing and infecting your kids with the wonderful, wonderful things and values of God. Amen. Amen. We're supposed to be ones that affect our families, praise the Lord. You see, your kids value what you, they value what you value as you, as you strive to value going after God. You know, you say, well, why don't kids value God like they should? Well, you know, it's because you look back at the parents. And, you know, I mean, when you, <laughs> when they, you go to the, I was thinking about somebody we were thinking about recently, you know, when they, they look at the parents, when, when the kid's doing the things that he shouldn't be do, and doing, do we look at the kids? No, we look to the parents. Amen. We look at, the, we say, well, you obviously haven't been, been stealing the right things into your kids, you know? And, you know, I can say that honestly, because I am a parent, you know, and I do try to instill the right things into my kids, but it's important that you know, they're a reflection of us. Amen. What are you doing at home? What are you doing around you? And what are you causing in your home? Praise the Lord. Amen. They're a reflection of you. Amen. And it's important that we're causing the good values to be reflected into their lives. Now, you may not see them, like I said, right off the bat, but they're going to have them when they need them. Amen. And that's important, you know, praise the Lord. You don't want them to uh, have a person jumping out of an airplane, you know, with a chute that don't work. Amen. You want to give them a chute that works. <laughs> Amen. And God works every time. It doesn't matter what the situation is, what you're going through. You know, your kids are going to have what they need every time if you're instilling the right things into their lives. Amen. And it's important. What are you valuing today? Amen. That's what you're, those are the values you're giving your kids today. Amen. And so what do you value? And think about it for a minute, you know, take the time, you know, to say, well, man, I don't know why you're asking me that question. Well, you know, it's important that you do look and see what you're valuing because other people are becoming, those are the things you're causing your kids to value. Amen. The, those are the things that you're passing on to your kids. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I remember my wife's uh, father, you know, he, uh, they gave me his uh, books, you know, after he passed away, his mother brought me his books. They knew that I liked Christian books. And so they brought me the books that he used to read. And I'll never forget going through those books and I could see the values of her father, you know, as I look at those books, I was like, wow, these are great. And, you know, he, my wife has those same values that her father had, but that was, you know, because of the values he had in those books, I can see those values in my wife. Praise the Lord. Amen. He passed that down even before he passed away. Think about that today. You know, you don't know how long you're going to be on this earth. You don't know what you're going to do tomorrow. What values do you want to send to people? Amen. What values do you want to leave your kids? 
Amen. And think about that, you know, and you can see the, what he was striving for, what he was trying to accomplish, praise the Lord, by looking at just the things that he was reading. Amen. In his life. Amen. You know, if I had all my books stacked up here today, you know, you probably can see a lot of things of what I value and what I'm going after. Praise the Lord. I have lots of books, you know, and some on the computer. Praise the Lord. You know, anymore they're on the computer. But, you know, it's like those values are important that you're passing down. Amen. Amen. And she's got those same values. He was a man of God and he loved God, you know, and he, he valued the Holy Spirit and he cared about the works of God in his life. And she values the Holy Spirit and values the works of God. Amen. In her life. Life, you know, and I believe it's because they instilled that into her life. You know, what are you passing down? What are your values that you're passing down? Amen. Amen. My mom valued going to church and like I said earlier, she valued us being there. You know, she valued it so much that she would bring my friends and uh, we would go out to eat. She would take us out to eat every time we go to church. I, I, every friend I knew wanted to go because they were going to get pancakes. You know, you, we didn't have a whole lot of money at the time. You know, we were like, man, you know, we'll go. You know, we might get chicken. I had this one friend. He was embarrassing, you know, because he came. One time we went to eat after church. He had like 15 different plates out there. I'm like, what on earth, you know? But mom would pay for it all anyway. You know, so he would go and she, she affected not only me, she affected those kids that were going to church. Think about that, you know. You know, I'm, I'm, I'll never forget him getting all those plates. I was like, this is embarrassing. He's getting all these plates, you know, but mom still took care of him. Mom made sure that he was, she cared about her values being transferred to us, praise the Lord, amen. And she cared about the change being made and affecting my friends and me, praise the Lord. How many lives can be changed in your home by you valuing the things of God, amen? Not just yours, but you can affect their friends, you can affect other family members. Think about that now, by you valuing the things of God in your home, praise the Lord. Number two, the pestilent women care about their kids' purpose. You know, I, I think this is one of the most important things in the world, you know, that we care about our kids' purpose, praise the Lord. Me and my wife, we always, we strive to care about our kids' purpose. We got, I've got one kid right now that likes uh, YouTube, you know, and he's making YouTube videos. And uh, we've, we've got him a green screen and we've tried to, you know, get him everything in the world, you know, to help him make these videos and play him video games and things like that, you know. And we've tried to support him in that, you know, because that's his dream. That's what he wants to do. That's his purpose, praise the Lord, you know. So we try to support Support him in that. You know, I watch his videos, you know, we try to support him in that and be a blessing to him. I got another kid on the other side of the world, you know, up in Alaska, and he's actually creating comics, you know, and he makes comics, and we try to support him in that for years. We've tried to help him as he's become an artist and as he's tried to develop his writing and all the things we can do to support him in it and try to encourage him in it to fulfill his purpose. And we've always not tried to make him be like us, but we help him to fulfill their purpose, you know, be their unique person to who they are. Praise the Lord, you know. And I, you know, I bought books. I never forget buying draw, drawing books for him to be able to draw the art, you know, for comics. And we bought him all kinds of comics. Matter of fact, even in Alaska, we have boxes of his comics here, you know, because we've tried to support. Him. We probably bought most of those comics for him, you know, because we try to support him in what he does, and we wanted to fulfill his purpose. Recently, he's having one published of himself, and we wanted to invest in it. Well, my wife's like, hey, can we invest in it? We want to be a blessing to you, you know? He's like, no, I want to do this myself, you know? But we want to invest in it. We want to be a part of it, you know? And it's because we care about him and we want to be a part about what he's doing, you know? We care about their purpose, amen? Do you care about your kid's purpose? Do you care about what they're getting into? Be a pestilent person, man. Get nosy. Get in there and want to help them to fulfill their purpose. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's what a good parent does. That's what a good mother does. Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy 1 6 says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting of my hands. Uh, amen. You know, Paul wanted to stir up Timothy's gift. He cared about his purpose. Praise the Lord. And we need to be people that care about the purposes of our kids. Amen. Second Corinthians 1 6 in the Amplified says it like this, that this why I remind you to fan into the flame the gracious gift of God, the inner fire, the special endowment which is in you through the laying on the hands with those of the elders at your ordination. He wanted to flame that fire. He wanted to flame that gift, amen? And you need to be flame that gift, praise the Lord. Not, and don't be jealous of somebody's gift, amen? And there's people who be jealous of their kids because you didn't fulfill what they're fulfilling. 
you could be upset with some things that they may be wanting to do, praise the Lord, but they're not you. And we should be flaming those gifts so that they can fulfill their purpose. Amen. Our job, one of our number one jobs as parents is being encouragers to our kids. Amen. And we need to be encouragers. Did you know that the five-fold ministry, if you look it up, one of their main jobs is being encouragers? Think about that. We're supposed to be encouraging each other. Amen. And encouraging people, you know. We got too many people trying to tear people down, you know. There may be a comment put up about me today trying to tear me down, you know, because they like to put comments out there, you know. But, you know, we're supposed to be encouragers. Amen. That's not going to stop me from being encouraging to whoever I can be. And we need to be people that are encouraging people around us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Fanning that flame. I I hope I'm fanning your flame today. Praise the Lord. Fan the flame and the fire of God in your life as a mother. Praise the Lord. Notice Paul cared about Timothy's gifts and we need to care about the gifts of our kids praise the Lord amen amen you know it's important to us you know my mom always supported me in my dreams even though some of them were crazy you know (laughs) you know I wanted to rock you know and uh, this was back in the 80s and most of the rockers you know they would dye their hair and dress wild you know mom boy she's part of that she's like hey I'll help you get to get the clothes you need to rock you know and get your hair the way it needs to look to rock you know praise the Lord she'd do whatever she could but she'd support me in whatever I did she got me guitar lessons and she'd take me and make sure I got there, you know, paid for those guitar lessons, supporting me in my gifts. And, and some people would say today, you know, some arts gifts, they might say, well, man, that's crazy. You know, why would you want to do that? You know, but those are precious gifts, you know, and people need those gifts. You don't know how a song could change somebody's life. Amen. You don't know how something written could change somebody's life. And those art gifts are important just as much as any other gift that you have. And so it's important that we're encouraging them in whatever gift it is. Amen. You may say, well, man, I don't know about doing this or doing that or the other, you know. Well, that's okay, you know, because their gift may change as they grow and they may get more focused on what it is. But as you help them focus on that gift, it makes them narrow, it helps them narrow down the path they need to take. Praise the Lord. And so you need to fan that flame to help them with encouraging them with that gift. Praise the Lord in their lives. Amen. Hey man, you know, a great business person and find out they're a pastor later, you know. They might be a great person at speaking and find out they're a great teacher later, you know. You don't know. You don't know where it can lead to and where it could go. It might be a person that makes movies and their little phone and the next thing you find out they're making great big pictures and, and helping other people with those movies, praise the Lord. There's some great inspiring Christian movies out there now. They didn't used to have them like they have them today. There are some great movies now in the theaters right now, you know, and it's amazing to think you know you that person could have started on their phone you don't know where they started uh, but they can have a great world impact and we need to encourage their gifts and my mom always did that with me and she you know she's one of the biggest givers to my ministry right now you know she she's one of the biggest givers to this ministry right now why because she's a person who's always cared about my dreams always cared about my goals praise the lord amen and what about you today do you care about your kids dreams and their goals are you the biggest help help to them with what they're doing right now amen think about that be a person that impacts your kids' destiny and person that helps them fulfill their purpose, praise the Lord. A pestilent woman never gives up on her kids. That's my last point. And, uh, you know, it's important that you never give up on your kids, even if they're going the wrong direction or whatever direction they're going. God can get them back on track. Amen. It may seem like it's the worst thing you ever saw, and you may have never seen that in your life, but it doesn't matter. God can cause that to be worked to the good, like we talked about earlier, for them. Amen. He can get them on the right path, and it's important that you're supporting them and never giving up on them. My wife has always been a major encourager to my kids. Uh, you know, it seems like something's impossible. She always encouraged them, you can do it. Amen. You can accomplish this. You just have to be a person that believes that you, God can help you to do it. Praise the Lord. She's always been an encourager to my kids. Even if they call or if they're spending time with them, she's always been an encourager. And, you know, she never made them feel like they couldn't do something, you know. And you should never make your kids feel like they can't do something. Can't isn't an option in their lives. Amen can do is what we are all about we can do anything through christ jesus amen matter of fact jesus said all things are possible to those who believe amen so you need to be pushing those values into your kids and never giving up on your kids help them say hey we can do all things through christ jesus 
Nothing's impossible with God's help on your side. Praise the Lord. You always want to make them feel like they can do it. Amen. Never giving up on them. No matter what. Amen. If it was the last breath you breathe, never give up on your kids. Praise the Lord. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. You know, Paul wrote that letter to the Philippian church. And you think about that, you know, how encouraging that had to be for the Philippian church. Think about that for a minute here, how he, he took the time and wrote him a letter and made sure that he encouraged it. My wife's so much like that. She makes sure that she does something encouraging to people. We just yesterday, we went to somebody's house to be a blessing to them. And uh, I'll never, uh, she, the lady, actually, her her husband was passing away. And uh, she's over there last, her last hours with her husband. And my wife wanted to make sure that we went down there. And we took them flowers and we gave to them and be a blessing to them. Made sure they eat the, you know, whatever restaurant they wanted to go to to be a blessing to them. You know, you know, you may not be able to do that. But you can still be a blessing for them. You can be a person praying for them, amen, and letting them know you're praying for them, standing in the gap for them, you know. And that's the way you need to be. And he did that with this this Philippian letter. He sent he sent this letter. He said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, encouraging them that they can do all things through Christ, which strengthens them, amen. And you know, are you a person encouraging your kids today? Are, are you instilling that into your kids today, amen? Are you writing them little letters of encouragement? My wife, my wife's done that. She's written little letters, you know. She even calls my kid in Alaska, Sunshine, you know, trying to encourage him, it's, uh, encouraging him with her words, amen. And he, she's trying to encourage them to fulfill what they're supposed to do, amen, and letting them know that they are valued, amen. And it's important that you're doing that with your kids you're encouraging them never giving up on them amen no matter what they do we never give up on them praise the lord amen amen we need to be encourage our kids and to, to not give up never giving up on their situations praise the lord I'll never forget my wife has always been that type of person that never gave up. You know, she went to college, you know, and she worked jobs and right, at, you know, right after high school, went to college and worked and made sure she put herself through college. And then she, she came, we got married, you know, and she helped me as I went into Bible college and helped me to go to Bible school. Praise the Lord. Been an encourager and to the family, praise the Lord. We had kids within that time and encouraged, always been a person of encouraging through that time, you know. And then she even got her master's degree, you know. But you think about that, you know, how that affects her kids. Amen. And how encouraging that is to her kids, showing them that she's living a life that doesn't give up. Amen. And we're supposed to live a life that we don't give up. Amen. We never give up on God's purpose on our lives, you know. That's one of the main ways you teach your kids never to give up is by you never giving up. Amen. And if they see dad doesn't give up and they see that mom doesn't give up, that teaches them and it affects them like a pestilence, like we're talking about being pestilent mothers, causing that good Christian disease to get into their veins, praise the Lord, where they don't give up. Amen. And then they're not people that quit or no matter what the circumstances or what the challenges are they're facing today, praise the Lord. Amen. And maybe you are a mother today and, and you've been a person that gives up often. You know, you quit and you quit every time there's a challenge and when something comes up, you just you give up and you cave in, you know. Well, don't be a person like that anymore. You can change today and affect your family in a major way. You can be a person that causes your kids never to give up, praise the Lord, amen. And you need to be a person that never gives up. God never gave up on you. Why would you give up on yourself, praise the Lord, amen. He wants you to accomplish your dreams and your goals. He never gives up. Every, he, matter of fact, he says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you, praise the Lord. Amen. And you know, you need to be that way with your kids. You need to be a person that says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Amen. I'm never going to give up on you, praise the Lord. And that's the way we need to be with our kids. And that's the way God is with you. Amen. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. You're never going to be alone without him, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Think about that. You know, you need to be instilling that into your kids that they that never give up, praise the Lord, no matter what the situation. Amen. I remember recently, you know, we happened to homeschool our son, you know, and it was kind of distressful at first, really distressful at first, you know, kind of getting it going, you know, because we had to learn how to homeschool him, you know, because of uh, the COVID situation. So we started helping him, you know, and he got a little discouraged, you know, but my wife is always encouraging to him. Always encouraging him that we can get this done. We can do this, praise the Lord. Amen. And, you know, whatever it is today, whatever you're having to work through today, you know, don't feel like you can't get it done. You can get it done. Amen. And you need to value that with your kids and infuse that into your kids. Never quitting. Never giving up. Never matter what the situation is. Amen. Maybe you don't have another dollar to your name. Amen. Never quit. 
never give up, praise the Lord, uh, whatever God has called you to do and whatever your kids call to do, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your goodness, and we thank you for your mercy today, Father. Lord, you are so good to us, and we just thank you, Father. You've been good to us throughout this message, and we knew you would. You've always been good to us. And Father, we just ask, Lord, if somebody today, if there's a mother today, Father, Lord, that this spoke to her, and, and Father, Lord, we ask that you help her to be encouraged today to fulfill what you put in her heart, Father and help her to be the mother that you called her to be. And Father, we pray for all the mothers, Lord, that you help them to be what you've called them to be, Father. Help them to be mothers that never quit, never give up, and they're stealing values into their families today, Father. And Father, we just ask for it in Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If there's someone today you don't know Jesus, if it's a mother or anybody that doesn't know Jesus, well, I, always, I don't like to leave without giving you a chance to know Jesus. You know, that's the best thing you could ever do for your family today if you don't know Jesus is to get Jesus today. And you can cause your family to go to new heights if you'll take accept Jesus into your life, your own life, to go to new heights. If you'll accept Jesus into your life. Amen. You don't want to live an eternity in hell because you didn't accept Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the answer. He's the answer to every one of your situations that you're facing today. And you need to accept it today. Your next breath is because God gave it to you. And you need to value God. He loves you with all of his heart. And he wants to help you today. And if you want to know him, just pray this prayer with me today. Father, I believe that you've risen Jesus from the dead. Let's repeat that after me. And Father, I just confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. Amen. And we just ask you, Jesus, to be Lord of our lives right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. If you pray that prayer, he is the Lord of your life right now. Amen. And welcome to the family. We're so glad to have you in the family of God today. If you would, email us here at jeremiasministries at yahoo.com. We'd love to hear from you. We love you. God bless you. We hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful Mother's Day. If you'd like to contact us for a prayer, praise reports, or offerings, go to jeremiasmithministries.podbean.com. Thank you for listening.